Welcome to today's video. This video is the continuation of what I covered in the previous video. In the previous video, I had talked about determination of reducing sugars in processed sugar or table sugar. And today, I'll talk about analysis of reducing sugars in juice extracted from sugarcane. The principle of the analysis is just the same for all the samples. The only difference is the procedure and calculation. There are important points that I had highlighted in the previous video which i will not repeat in this video so if you have not yet watched my previous video kindly watch it before you continue with this video so that you can get the whole concept of reducing sugars analysis sucrose which is the major substance extracted from cane juice is made up of glucose and fructose sucrose is a disaccharide while glucose and fructose are monosaccharides Sucrose is an unreducing sugar while monosaccharides are reducing sugars. That is, they can reduce blue copper 2 sulfate to brick red copper 1 oxide. Since sucrose cannot react with copper 2 sulfate, the quantity of reducing sugars in juice sample can be easily determined. Sucrose can break down to glucose and fructose if harvested sugarcane or extracted juice is not handled well. And remember, the aim of sugar factory is to extract sucrose from sugarcane as received from the farm. However, this analysis is done to detect sucrose inversion that occur along processing line. Results obtained from this analysis enable the factory personnel prevent or control sugar loss by applying corrective measures in case there is a deviation. Comments for this analysis are number one, have reagents, under reagents have failing solution A. This solution has copper 2 sulfate. Number 2 you have failing solution B. This one has sodium hydroxide and potassium sodium tartrate and you have methylene blue indicator. If you want to know how these solutions are prepared, kindly watch my previous video on analysis of reducing sugars. The next requirement is samples. Under samples we have first expressed juice. This sample is sampled at the first rollers of milling tandem. Next, you have last expressed juice. This one is sampled at the last rollers of milling tandem. Next, you have mixed juice. Mixed juice refers to the mixture of the primary and secondary juice. And finally, we have clear juice. Clear juice is sampled at the clarifier, which is found at the juice treatment section. The next requirement is hot plate. Next, measuring cylinder. Next, distilled water. Next, four beakers. Next, four 100 ml volumetric flasks and finally burette. Copper content of the failing solution varies slightly from one solution to another. It's therefore important to standardize failing solution prepared to get failing factor. This factor is used in calculation of reducing sugars in juices. The first step of standardizing failing solution is to prepare dextrose solution. Remember, dextrose solution is just an invert sugar that's used as a standard reducing sugar. Weigh 1 gram of dextrose powder and put in 500 ml volumetric flask. Add some water and shake to dissolve all the dextrose powder. After dissolving, top up with distilled water to the mark. Put this dextrose solution in the burette and mount this burette on the stand. Measure 5 ml of each failing solution and pour into conical flask. Titrate failing solution in the conical flask against the dextrose solution that is in the burette while boiling on hot plate until color changes to brick red. Add 3 drops of methyl indicator. Continue titrating until color changes to brick red again. Add a drop of methyl indicator. If the solution remains red, that's the end point of the titration. It is important to know that for you to get accurate results for this analysis, you have to be keen on your measurements. Time taken to do the titration, remember it should not take more than 4 minutes. And also, you must do more than 2 titration, titrations. So after doing your first titration, you can measure another 5 ml of failing solution A and 5 ml of failing solution B. Put in another conco flask and do the second titration. So after getting the first and second titration, do the average. So after getting your average titer value, 
below is the calculation so to get failing factor you'll take 25.64 divided by your average tighter value for example if our tighter value was 25.7 the failing factor will be 25.64 divided by 25.7 which is equals to 0.9977 below is the procedure for analyzing reducing sugars in juice samples remember this procedure is the same for all juice samples so like in this video i'll just use one example that's first expressed juice the first step is to cool this juice then sieve to remove tiny particles remember these tiny particles if you don't remove them they can block your burette during the titration after sieving measure 50 ml of juice sample and pour in 100 ml volumetric flask then top up with distilled water to the mark pour the sample prepared in burette and mount, mount this burette on the stand measure 5 ml of failing failing a solution and put in a conco flask then add 5 ml of failing solution or failing failing b solution put the flask on the hot plate and allow the failing solution to heat till it boil after the failing solution has boiled start titrating with juice sample that is in the burette while shaking and boiling until color changes to brick red add three drops of methylene blue in keta Continue titrating until color changes again to brick red. Add a drop of methylene blue in keta to determine the end point of the reaction. In case you add a drop of methylene blue in keta and the solution remain just remain brick red, that means the all all the copper ions have reacted. Record the tighter value. Doing the analysis of first expressed juice you can prepare failing solution for the next sample you have to do like that up to the last sample so after getting your tighter values below is the formula used to calculate the percentage reducing sugars in juice sample so percentage reducing sugar is equals to vr times df times 100 over tv times failing factor where vr is the volume ratio remember the volume of the solution used to used for titration was 100 divided by the volume of the undiluted sample was 50 so if you take 100 on over 50 you take you get 2 so our volume ratio is 2 df is the dilution factor this factor is constant and is equals to 0 0.05128 ff is the failing factor remember for our prepared failing solution our failing factor was 0 0.9977 so in our calculation we will use we will use this factor and tv is the tighter value for example if the average tighter value of our first expressed juice was 9.2 nine what is the percentage reducing sugars in that juice sample so the percentage arrest are reducing sugars in that juice will be equal to 2 times 0 0.05128 times 100 over 9.9 .9 times 0 0.9977 which is equals to 1.038 percent when i made an introduction video on sugar technology I explained how sucrose is formed in sugarcane. For the sake of our new members and for those who have not managed to watch that video, I'll briefly explain how this sucrose is formed in sugarcane during growth. I said that chlorophyll in the leaf absorbs sunlight and this sunlight is used to convert carbon 4 oxide absorbed from the air and water to form glucose and fructose. These two monosaccharides con combine to form sucrose. This sucrose is transported to stock. In stock, sucrose can be stored or is broken back to fructose and glucose. These two monosaccharides are used as source of energy during sugarcane growth. Upon maturity, 
fructose and glucose again combine to form sucrose. All the glucose and fructose cannot be eliminated from sugarcane at maturity. Therefore, there must be a certain percentage of these monosaccharides in cane even if this sugarcane is fully mature. However, this monosaccharide should not be above 1%. High percentage of monosaccharides reduce the percentage of sucrose in the sugarcane. If the percentage of fast with the percentage of reducing sugars in fast express juice is above 1%, it shows that cane being milled is either young or stale. Remember, when cane is young, most of the glucose and fructose have not converted to sucrose. Why immediately when sugarcane is harvested, sucrose inversion starts, especially if this sugarcane is injured or exposed to high temperatures. So, overstayed cane has high reducing sugars compared to fresh cane. Percentage of reducing sugars in mixed and clear juice above 0.9 shows that there is high hydrolysis at milling and juice treatment section. Factors that can lead to high hydrolysis in juice extracted from sugarcane are high acidity, presence of invertase enzyme, and high temperature. Invertase enzyme in juice accelerate breakdown of sucrose to glucose and fructose. Microorganisms like lactobacillus species consume sucrose producing lactic acid. This acid quicken breakdown of sucrose at milling section. Underdosing of calcium hydroxide lead to low pH of clear juice. This low pH and high temperatures accelerate hydrolysis of sucrose in juice at juice treatment section. To control losses of sucrose via hydrolysis, the following factors have to be put into consideration. Number one, dosing of biocide should be consistent and efficient. Number two, biocide use should be effective. That means this biocide should be able to kill destructive microorganisms that are in extracted juice. Number three, milling devices like rollers, trash plate, and pumps should be sanitized frequently in order to remove layers of microorganisms which might affect the extracted juice. Number four, the temperatures of juice heaters should be maintained within the set limits to ensure that the invertase enzymes and microorganisms that are in the juice are killed. Finally, the pH of clear juice should be maintained between 7.0 to 7.4. Remember, low pH leads to hydrolysis. Thank you for watching my video. See you in the next video.